Hello, lovely boy. Good afternoon. And it's great to come your way once again. This is your favorite program, Governance and Star, with your friend, your brother, Franco Tumfo. Today, we are honored to have a great personality on our show. A man who has gained a lot of admiration for himself and for Ghanaians as a whole. He is no other person than our own father, Professor Philip Bonny Simpson. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Great to have you on our show. It is my privilege. Happy New Year. Many happy returns. I must say you look good, sir. Thank you. And you look good, too. Okay. Prof, tell us more about yourself. I am uh, 56, a okay. professor of law, a barrister, and solicitor. Okay. I am presently the rector of the Ghana Institute of Management and Public Administration. Okay. And I've been so for the last 10 months or so. Okay. Prior to then, I was a lecturer at the University of Cape Coast. Cape Coast. Okay. And at some point, became the dean of the School of Business. And at some other point, I also became the dean or founding dean of the Faculty of Law. Okay. I have been teaching for a while. I've done a teaching stint at the Central University College. Okay. I've had a teaching stint at the Ghana School of Law, wow. where I was also a senior lecturer and the editor of wow. the um, Ghana School of Law Journal. I've had a practice stint with the Commission on Human Rights and Administrative Justice. Okay, sir. And I was privileged to be the Director of Investigations. And um, I've been there for a public servant, okay. a private legal practitioner, wow. an academic, and I'm now a director at Kempa. Wow. Well, I can say you have a very long uh, list that contains a lot of things on your CV. I've <laughs> had the privilege of serving in diverse ways. <laughs> that is wonderful. Prof, proud to your appointments as a rector for Ghana Institute of Management and Public Administration. You were then the dean, the founding dean for the Faculty of Law at the University of Cape Coast. So what was the inspiration that made you establish the Faculty of Law? I should share the credit for the establishment okay. with others. Okay. The University of Cape Coast, which started off and which still has a core mandate okay. in education, has branched into a number of disciplines and has now become a comprehensive, broad, research-based university. So with the passage of time, they've gotten into the social sciences, of course. Okay. Um, they've got into business okay. studies. They've gotten into medicine. And they've gotten into law. Mm -hmm. And so the vision for such diversification preceded my time. Okay. And the law in particular has had the benefit of contributions from people within the university okay. as well as people from outside the university. From within the university, a particular name or two should be mentioned, uh, Professor Raymond Osei okay. and Professor Lawrence Oswansa, both okay. of the Faculty okay. of Arts. Okay. Then from outside the university, two or three other names should be mentioned. One is um, Dr. Lennox Agbosu, okay. one is Mr. Yao Opoku, and yet another is Maxwell uh, uh, Osei uh, Ajima. Okay. These sets from within and without had collaborated and felt, some of them being alumnus, some being lawyers, some being a com combination of both, some being okay. academics within the university, had felt that the time was ripe. And so, um, with an environment that was conducive to looking at some other disciplines of study, law being a discipline of study that they felt was appropriate okay. and relevant to the country and sufficiently market or demand driven, uh, it was at the right time that I was also, in a sense, okay. at the right place. And so I worked together with all such persons. The university was very supportive. During the tenureship of uh, Professor Nana Jane Opoku Ajiman, who at that time was the vice chancellor, they set in process the machinery to recruit a founding dean. Um, 
I applied, the Lord fell upon me. And as they say, the rest is history. I was given the um, appointment to serve. My duties, which I did for about a year and a half before okay. the first student came, was to look for faculty to draw up the curriculum okay. and the structure of the delivery of the programs, to get accreditation, to get space physical facilities mm -hmm. to deliver the program. Okay. So we had to use about a year and a half wow. of all of these preliminary processes until we were in a position to get, get our first yes. set of students. So I was founding the uh, without staff and my wow. job was to find staff, find staff wow. administrative yeah. and yeah. academic, academic and develop the curriculum, develop the library facilities and when and all of that, that is ready, ready the National Accreditation Board will give the approval okay. because they want to make sure that before the first set of students come in, they come into a well-structured program, okay. there are lecturers, there are lecture rooms, uh, there are library facilities and the like. So that is the experience okay. as founding dean. And I am happy that we not only established it, we saw it through. Uh, the first batch of students okay. graduated, a second batch of students graduated, a third batch of students are yet to get graduate. And even though the general entry level into the Ghana School of Law tends to be uh, less than a quarter or a fifth of candidates, they will normally, you will have a thousand, five or two thousand applying. And until recently when they increased it, from 250 to a maximum of 500, okay. you will tend to find that the overwhelming number of students will not pass. So if out of 1,500, they take 500, you see that the majority don't make it. Don't make it. But okay. I'm happy to know that the first year, uh, nearly some 60% made it. Wow. The second that year, an even greater number of people made it to the law school. Wow. So it meant that uh, the, quality the quality of my instruction and the quality of our students has been acceptable. Okay, so with this, you can see that your vision um, of you establishing the law has been accomplished. Uh, 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 where the your is collective your, not a personal okay. your. Okay. I want to treat it that okay. between uh, the university administration and the faculty, staff, and administration. So our vision uh, has been realized. And every teacher is interested in the caliber of the students. Uh, so if you've got a good law program and people subscribe to it and uh, you collect some monies from it, but the students passing out are not of the highest caliber. They can't make it in the world of competition. Um, their advocacy is poor, their writing is poor, their knowledge of the law is poor, then I think you failed. If on the other hand, you know, the students coming out will meet the standards of the best anywhere in the world, okay. and when put to test, and when tested by fire, they come out pure and refined, mm -hmm. then you feel happy. So as a teacher, I've been very pleased with what our students have done as students, and when they've even uh, competed at moot court competitions and competed for entrance into the law school with yeah. others, they have always done very well. That and that has been my greatest joy as great. founding dean yeah. Yeah. of the Faculty of Law. Wow, that is great. Prof, you've said a lot, but we want to find out from you, um, have you been able to achieve all that you want to achieve in life I haven't achieved everything that I want to achieve in okay. life, and if the good Lord gives me a little more years okay. and strength okay. and wisdom, I hope that I'll be able to um, do a little more, if not a lot more. Okay. As to whether I'm successful, I will say so, and I say so not okay. arrogantly, but modestly and confidently. Okay. Uh, a song out of the good book says, let the weak say I'm strong. strong. <laughs> <laughs> and let the poor say I'm rich. rich. Sure. 
And I think it is good to step forth with your best foot forward, knowing that whatever troubles and anxieties and setbacks we have had in life, okay. and I have had a lot, mm. we've been able to put that behind us and press on towards the prize. And as a lawyer, I have had some good cases and okay. some good clients. As a teacher, I have been privileged to see my students fare well in okay. life. As a parent, I have endeavored to do my best to position my children okay. as far as their abilities can go. Okay. As a husband, I have been supportive okay. of my wife and listened to counsel from my okay. wife. Okay. And as a child of God, I have endeavored to heed his calling. Wow. In all of these things, one can't claim perfection, mm. one can't claim setbacks, one can't claim impediments, one can't even claim the absence of sins. Okay. But when you look at the balance sheet, the plus sides against the minus sides, the benefits against the costs, the successes against the failures, I can say that the good Lord has enabled me to wow. be successful. Wow, that is quite inspiring. <laughs> and I will encourage all okay. to work towards that goal. Okay. There are so many difficulties in life that if one is not careful, the reasons that one will have to be depressed mm. or cynical or to be lazy or doubtful will exist. Your brother will let you down. The public servant will let you down. The infrastructure is not the best. The support you may get will not be forthcoming. So there is always a reason in the world, particularly in the developing world, to be resentful or cynical or to throw in the towel. But I will encourage all that notwithstanding the obstacles, mm -hmm. there is also always an opportunity to serve and to make a difference, difference and to contribute. And we should be looking to that side. Is the glove has half empty or is it half full? Someone may see it as half empty. Okay. I would prefer to see it as half full. Someone may see opportunity in negativity mm. and someone may see despair in negativity. So I hope that probably through this forum, as we encourage mm. people to claim success, okay. it is not a claim of arrogance. Mm but a claim of recognition that the good Lord made each and every individual for a purpose okay. to accomplish something. Roses are beautiful flowers, but they come with thorns. Yeah. So you can be scared of the thorns or you can appreciate the beauty of the rose and its lovely fragrance. And I would rather the positive side. That is wonderful. Prof, we are really enjoying the conversation. But I want to say that you've been able to achieve a lot, as you rightly said. And I think there are certain things that really motivated you. Uh, you want to share with governors and staff and the, the general public look, watching us. Somebody wants to be like you. Somebody wants to become like Professor Philip Bobony Simpson. What are your inspirations? He who lacks wisdom. Hmm. should seek for it. Okay. 
and should ask God. The fear of knowledge, the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. wisdom. The starting point is to appreciate that no one is endowed inherently with all of the knowledge, okay. competencies, and skills. Okay. It takes one first and foremost a humility to, to accept the primacy of God in one's life. Mm. And then two, having accepted that, the dedication to work hard to achieve that course. Anyone who despises or disputes God may be undertaking an intellectual exercise that may make the person happy. Okay. From my point of view, it is futile, silly and unsuccessful. So, the good Lord has a place in the success of all. Because in the down times, in the times of despair, when the entire world may appear not to understand you or to have distanced itself from you, there will be someone to comfort you. When things seem hazy and confusing, there will be someone to guide you. Okay. And all of that is God. But after God has done his part, he gives people free will. Okay. He expects us to do our part. Do our part. Because you cannot be only prayerful okay. and successful. You go and pray and pray and pray. <laughs> and you don't study and you want to pass the exam. You want to go and pray and pray and pray. And you don't go to work and keep the job or get promoted. You want to go and pray and pray and pray and move on in life. So the good Lord has his part to play and we must appreciate it. Then we too have our part okay. to play and we must do it. But since man is a social being, we live in a social context. The environment in which we have also has a role to play. The environment will impact upon us and we will impact on our environment. So the third consideration beyond God and self is who do we associate with? Yes, and that is a matter of choice. Okay. Who do we associate with? There are all manner of people out there, some close to, some far away with, but it is your choice where you are inclined to go. It is your choice with whom you are inclined to fellowship with. Okay. It is your choice who you will be inspired by mm. or who you will okay. choose oh. as a mentor. And so the environment which we appropriate and a selection of company will contribute in no mean measure to our success. These three things are what I will say. God, self which is hard work and environment are associates. We must be careful who we choose to surround ourselves with. Lovely people, Prof is really inspiring us. Prof says there are three things that we must do. And then he said, God, we must seek God. And then we must also be hardworking. And then the people we associate ourselves with. Prof, we have so much encouraged this very evening. Maybe you want to advise the youth out there. There are some few words you want to share with them especially with our unemployed graduate out there? Two things. Since the invitation is to speak to the youth, okay. the youth must realize that they are youth. Sure. The youth are not outright children okay. and they are not fully blossomed okay. adults. And it is important to appreciate this status. 
Because the youth generally are in a sense of dependency or in early adulthood, some of them may think that others owe them a living. Okay. And they may have a certain sense of dependency or irresponsibility. Okay. That must be avoided. On the one hand, feeling as little children, okay. which they are not. Okay. Position yourself to serve and to work and to add value to yourself and to society. But also recognize that you'll get so many more years ahead of you. Okay. And despite however knowledgeable you are, you don't know it all. Okay. However influential you are, you haven't commanded the world. However uh, rich you may be, there is a lot ahead of you. And that's the account say one day, a bingina bottle. So that's the first point, the appreciation of the position of the youth. Okay. Not that young, not that old, mm -hmm. in the middle, mm -hmm. and they should avail themselves mm -hmm. for service. But the second thing, is also to appreciate that in a developing country such as ours, okay. the macroeconomic conditions have not made it too possible for people either to be as employed or as self-employed as they would like to be. Many people go through school and a few years after school they don't get a job. It's not their fault. And it is not everybody who is entrepreneurial. Okay. But even those who are entrepreneurial require an enabling environment. Are there business incubators out there? Are there access to advisory services and access to funds for them to set up? And it is helpful for the country to organize itself such that everybody with talent, and that is everybody, has the opportunity to utilize the talent. The story in the Bible is about the person who buried the talent. Okay. If you have a talent and you bury it, you must be rebuked. <laughs> but you must also remember another part of the story says that the person was given the talent. Some traded with it and multiplied it. Five, doubled it. Two, Three. doubled it. One, buried it. Sure. In other words, in addition to your inherent ability to do what you have with the talent, there is the external resource. Okay. What environment do you have such that you are given a talent to exhibit okay. and that is probably a challenge of the leadership of the country and for training institutions such as ours as rector at Skimpa where my mandate is to train people undergraduate and postgraduate and people doing all manner of short courses okay. we hope that we bring out the best of the talent of people so that they exhibit their talents and manifest them so that society will benefit. And as society benefits, the individuals themselves will also prosper. This will be my remark to the youth of today. So that society may benefit and the individual will also benefit. Those are the last words of Prof. Lovely people, it's been great on your favorite show, Governance and Star with Franco Tumfo. Today, we got the opportunity to interview our own father, our role model, our mentor, Professor Philip Ebo Bonzi Simpson, who is the director for Ghana Institute of Management and Public Administration, GIMPA. And I'm very sure you've really enjoyed our conversation. Thank you so much. Remain positive until we come your way. Bye bye for now.